Today's show is brought to you by Milwaukee-based Spike Brewing, designer and manufacturer of premium quality home brewing equipment. Is your beer falling flat? Are you sick of setting up all that gear for a brew day and running out to buy propane? Frustrated by the weather dictating your brewing schedule? Take it inside and avoid the cold, wet winter with the turnkey electric system from Spike Brewing. Trusted by homebrewers and pros alike, the Spite system will change the way you brew and take your beer to new heights. And whether you're interested in a simple upgrade from a glass carboy to a stainless steel fermenter, or you're switching from propane to electric, Spite Brewing has the solution for you. Reach out today to spitebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, and their team can help you figure out what you need to make the most of your brew day. Spite Brewing. Pursue what's possible. Entertaining, Entertaining shows. shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, visit Homebrew Happy Hour. Dot com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing, and today I am joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson down there, as well as the President and Chief Keg Washer of KegConnection.com right over up there, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good, good. Uh, I like that funky music for the Spike Yeah, That's kind of cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, funky yeah, music. It's... Funky. Hey, you know what? Anytime I do a production that has a music bed, you have something to say. You have something to say. It doesn't matter. You know how, when I... <laughs> is when, it, I mean, what is wrong with a positive comment? You did not... The, I could sense the sarcasm <laughs> in you. No, your... I like the music in the ad. I'm, I'm being totally dead serious. I ah. Like Oh, man, I'm sorry. Maybe I've just... Uh, you know, <laughs> you I know, mean, the music playing now kind of sucks. But, uh, you, know. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Maybe I'm still a little butthurt about losing a weight loss challenge to you. I don't know. It's bleeding into my personal life. There are guys I train with who who have brought it up on the mats. And and these are guys I can't beat on the mats. So it's not like I can take it out on them. They're like, like oh, I heard you lost to your boss. Like, what? And they're like, yeah, you're on your podcast. Like, why do you listen? First off, <laughs> thanks for listening to the show. But secondly, how embarrassing. People know. People, it is affecting my real life. My my follies and my failures to Todd Burns are now bleeding into my real life. Not just, I can ignore people private messages. Hey, how's it feel to lose to Todd? Like, oh, ha, 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 troll, and delete, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's troll. It? Well, it was always confusing with a bookkeeper and you. There was Josh. We called you Joshua and him Josh. And now it's just fat Josh. It's, <laughs> everybody knows who it is. That's so messed up. Even though he weighs more than you. I was just say, because uh, book, <laughs> bookkeeper Josh looks like he's 40 months pregnant, but I'm still fat Josh. I love it. <laughs> There's no amount. One time I got like in really good shape. Uh, not the time that I got really skinny, but like right after that, I got in real good shape. And I'm like flexing myself in Todd's office. Like, oh, what do you think of this? And Todd's like, hey, you look fat. <laughs> like, he was, like, no, <laughs> I've never gotten a nice compliment from Todd. And, and he gets his family and friends in on it, too. When I see them like, Josh, you putting on some weight? Like, I'm glad I don't have an eating complex, guys, or a body image issue. Uh, They don't know that I cry myself to sleep because of my body dysmorphia. But anyway, welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. We're happy to have you back for another week. I have totally forgot the week that y'all are gone. It's not next week. It's the following week, right? Y'all are going to Dusseldorf? Because you're here next week, too, right? I am. My wife made a comment because I'm I'm going to be up there Thursday, Friday of this week. We're recording this a day early so I could publish it on time. Uh, and then I'm going to be there Thursday, Friday next week. And Christy asked, she goes, you've been going weekly for like over a month now. And I was like, yeah, that, that Todd, Todd just loves seeing this face in person. He I likes- keep asking you like, why are you coming up again? And you're like, <laughs> oh, I need to, you know, she doesn't Oh, shut up. <laughs> you're, now you're trying, I know what you're doing here. She's going to listen to this and go, wait a second. You've been trying to escape us. Haven't you? Um, uh, I, I need to, I need to text her. You, don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. The last time you texted her, we were intoxicated together in some trade show. And you were like, hey, look at your husband's having a miserable time. 
and uh, she hasn't forgiven you since. Like she she holds grudges. She's crazy. Okay. Um, I I don't have a whole lot of small talk except for a few announcements on our group, uh, our Patreon members at the top two tiers. So now we did launch a thirty five dollar tier to so get you a all almost every perk of the fifty dollar tier. Uh, including a recipe kit every other month. The $50 tier, they, those guys get a recipe every month, uh, extract or all grain. And then the $35 tier, because we had uh, our buddy Fred, uh, Blind Guy Brewer, or, oh no, now I'm going to butcher his Instagram name. He'll he'll message it and I'll update the show notes. He, terribly nice guy, he had just suggested a while back, like, hey, I don't want to brew every month. I don't really have the time, but what if you did one like for every other month? And I talked to Todd and Todd's like, you idiot. Why didn't you do that already? That of course, like now he's hiring Fred. I got fired. Fred's the new marketing guy at Cat Connection. And, uh, he has better ideas than me. Apparently. How many times have I started out a sentence like that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Way too many. I know. <laughs> but, uh, so we did, we launched it and we've already had some people join it. And if you've already, if you're already a member of the tier or of the, patreon at all and upgrading i've been messaging and reaching out to see if you want uh if you're just joining it fresh we are implementing a policy where it'll be the second month of your membership when the recipe goes out if you're upgrading or if we know you just message me because we we do things in good faith like if you've been a, a listener for a while you submit questions you interact with us there's a good chance if you want like this month's recipe is the alt beer the Fantastic Dusseldorf Alt, the I can't believe we don't talk about it more because I'm always talking about Kolsch or lately breakfast out. But that alt beer recipe is this month's featured recipe. James couldn't be more excited down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we are, uh, I'm terribly excited. My dad and I are going to have an alt brew day. Um, I put it out. We have a private Facebook group for members of our Patreon at all levels. So if you join, you'll see the link in your membership stuff to where. If you do Facebook, you could join that group and interact with us. But I put it out there. I was like, hey, I'm doing dry January, but that doesn't mean I can't brew. I'm just not going to be drinking while I brew, which kind of sucks. But what do you all think I should do? And our buddy Steve in that group was like, you know, the alt beer would actually be a pretty good choice uh, it, it, because it needs some time, right? It wouldn't be a beer that I'm going to want to turn around real quick and drink. And I go, you know what? Perfect. Boom. It's also this month's featured recipe. I'll do a little video thing of me and my dad and it'll be fun. So that's my upcoming brew day. I know things have been busy there. Y'all are planning for Germany. James, do you have any upcoming brew days that you're planning? Mm, not that I'm not until we get back. I know that uh, I was thinking about maybe doing like a Abbey Ale or something so far out of my comfort zone that it may not turn out very good, but I'm going to try something different. Of course, you you do say that about every beer you're about to brew, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, what about your, your home system has not been fired up in a long time. Do you have anything planned? Nothing planned. I'm going, we're, we're, we've got meetings all week next week. Then we're going to Germany for meetings. And I have, I have no plan to brew until we return. Yeah. You are the opposite of dry January with all your meetings. You're just having like, all these people, you're, especially in Germany. I get why you didn't want to do it sp uh, specifically for that 10 day trip or however long y'all are gone for. It's kind of hard to be in Altstadt Dusseldorf and, and turn down a malted uh, barley beverage. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not kind. Beverage. It's not kind of difficult. It's impossible, my friend. It it's is. Impossible. Yeah, I know. I we're know. staying. We're going to stay a couple of nights in an, like an Airbnb, and uh, we're going to be across the brewery. Yeah. So you told me that last week. Uh, I. It's because the normal Hilton is booked up. I'm assuming, or you're just trying something different. I, I don't remember what you. Uh, said. It was super expensive. There must be a trade show or something. So then I try that, and now they, they, that may be what we do every time. Now that now that I've uh, tried it, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes first. But yeah, our buddy Brandon, who may be the best home brewer we know collectively, yep. uh, Brandon Allen. You should follow him on his Instagram. I think it's a public one. If it's private, sorry, Brandon, you're getting a lot of requests today. But he uh, had told me about Homebrew Con every year. They always do an Airbnb, and he's always like, you should do an Airbnb, man. It's like pretty affordable, and and we can find them easy around there. And I'm like, look, Todd Todd pays for it, and Todd Butch said, I don't do any of that stuff. But maybe we should for Homebrew Con as well. Look at, well, this 
coming home brew con we're actually i don't want to do an airbnb because the conference is at the well I, I booked the hotel rooms four months ago right well also though it's but but i wouldn't have argued with you anyway because it's at the gaylord opry conference center whatever it's called which is like this big biodome oh looking. yeah yeah i'm thinking craft brewer show yeah 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 that, that place is cool i've been there before right you were there and it would be kind of like when we were in portland and you tried the data set mcminimins where it's like uh oh, yeah. The experience is worth it alone. So, yeah, I wouldn't have fought you there because I don't think you can do an Airbnb at a hotel. But, no, San Antonio, you booked it. You're right. You booked that also a long time. You like to book, and it's smart because you probably get the better pricing and the availability. But, like, if a trade show for 2021 is announced tomorrow and you're like, we're going to it, your next step is booking the hotel, like, the following day. You're very prepared, my friend. I like that. Thank you. Proper Planning proper prior per- pr- planning prevents piss poor performance. That too. <laughs> one of my dad's one of my dad's favorite sayings. Yeah, that sounds like something a chemical engineer would say. Yeah, okay. Every time I screw something up, he goes, Proper prior planning prevents piss poor <laughs> performance. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Uh besides the brew day, and then yes, I already mentioned our our Patreon, the new tier. Welcome Pat's recipes. Last month they were delayed. For whatever reason, I'm a schlub. The recipes are going out this week, uh, so you should get an email with tracking. If you don't, you can always message me, Joshua, at homebrewhappyhour.com. All the new signees as well uh, will go out. We've already had three or four this week at lower tiers. All your welcome pats are going out this week. We love it when you take photos of that and tag us in it on your Instagram. Uh, We are at Homebrew Happy Hour if you are new to Instagram or if you're new to the show and you don't follow us yet. But please tag us. I love reposting all your stuff in our stories. It warms my little Grinch heart to see that people (laughs) consume our content and actually are happy. When I send the stuff out in the welcome pats, I'm always like, I really, I'm, I'm so self-conscious. I'm like, I really hope they like this because like I put so much effort into this little sticker or this little button. <laughs> and when people get it, and they're like, dude, this thing's cool. I'm like, are you lying to me? Or are you being serious? And when they're when they're serious, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. That means the world. But yeah, ki- like kidding aside, y'all support and joining our Patreon and just listening to the show means the world to us. So thank you so much. We look forward to bringing you more content in 2020 that hopefully you like. So with all that said, we have a couple of questions for today's show, starting with Wayne, our buddy who uses the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Wayne wrote in, Joshua, Fortunately for me, when I started brewing last spring, I started out with all grain because I didn't know any better. I happened upon your podcast and binge listened and now feel fortunate that I'm a member of such a knowing group of brewers. We really fooled him. Uh, (laughs) You you and James personally respond to my requests and questions almost immediately, and that's a big deal to a new brewer. By the way, I think Todd suckered you on the contest, but I digress. I agree. Uh, so recently, I brewed the Belgian Pale Ale Kit from Kekinechen with liquid Y yeast 1214, and after two days, had no active fermentation. I panicked and added some Safe Ale US 05, and by the end of the day, it was bubbling away. For for listeners who don't know, the 05 is a dry yeast. The first one he used was a, a liquid, and then so he used dry yeast afterward. My fermenter is in my basement where I keep it 62 degrees in the winter, but I bumped it up to 66 when I pitched the 05. Do you think I may have had bad yeast? I didn't or didn't wait long enough or even had the temp too low. Is it possible now that this different yeast will change the profile of the beer? I know there's a lot of this, but would, uh, but I would like your, or especially James, because he knows, uh, opinion on this. Keep up the great work and don't let up on Todd. He'll probably think you wrote this anyway. See you guys at Homebrew Con, Wayne. Yeah, when people are too nice to me, Todd gets very suspicious. He's, he doesn't oh, think that whatever. they're, he doesn't think they're just- real. How many I times? Saw, it- <laughs> uh, I saw that movie Midway a couple of weeks ago, and when they the Americans came in and dive bombed them when they were changing their stuff <laughs> out, you guys would all say, "Well, they, they we cheated when we did that. You know? <laughs> we should have waited for them to change their bombs <laughs> out." You know, whatever, whatever. So James, funny enough, he submitted this question, but he actually had reached out to you as well, and you yeah. you walked him through this. So let's start with with. W- your information gathering from him on y'all's call and how you, this got resolved. What, what ended up coming from it? Well, he, I think the biggest thing was, and we talked about this back and forth that, you know, he needed, he maybe didn't read on the yeast and, and the, the range that the yeast works at. And I think honestly, it was just an issue of it's just too cold. And sometimes, and also if you go to the Y yeast profile, 
it, it'll say that it, it can be a little slow to start, but it attenuates well, which means it consumes the sugars really good. Um, so I think it was, it was a couple of things, and, and I kind of pointed him in the right direction that, you know, he was concerned after listening to our podcast that he thought possibly lag time might have created some off flavors because it took so long. But I'll tell him it was probably more the fact that it was just too darn cold. And, uh, you know, the colder is slower is what I told him. And, uh, you know, he pitched the 05, but I'm also wondering if he hadn't have pitched the 05, if it wouldn't have started up anyway. You know, I, I think it was just a couple of things where it was it was a little cold. So the fermentation or the the, the yeast multiplying took a little longer. And uh, and he just didn't realize that uh, that particular yeast takes a little while to get going. Yeah, like you said, it is um, reading the instructions because different yeasts have different ranges, right? They do. Yeah, yeah. They can now. Every yeast will work at warmer temperatures. It just what it creates is maybe not something that you would want to taste. So in in your opinion, like in this situation, I don't know if you had already addressed it to him or, or gave him a definitive answer. Is there mm. anything he can expect from that that lag time between uh, pit, uh, initial pitch, no, no active fermentation, and then active fermentation? Like what is something he should be on the lookout for that would be common of a flaw? Like, or, or maybe what's more common? Like is diacetyl more common during that kind yeah, of period? It can be. Yeah, you can create that. And also it can create all flavors, you know, due to the long, extremely long lab, lag time. And then you won't get, if it isn't a yeast issue, your attenuation will get, will, won't be that really good. So in other words, you'll have, you'll end up with, probably with stuck fermentation. So you're going to be, you know, if you're at 1050, and it takes if you're at the at the right temperature and it takes to 24 to or I say over 48 hours to get going, chances are you're going to have some off flavors due to lag time. But I think in his issue, it was more of it was just too cold, so the yeast were kind of slow to get going. Um, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. The only other thing that might possibly cause the taste profile difference is adding that all five, but, uh, I still think he should have a pretty good beer to drink. Is there, um, uh, a common taste difference that like, I mean like, Oh, it's going to be a little bit more estuary or, Oh, it's going to yeah, be that, more- typically the warmer that the, the fermentation takes place, the more esters that are created. And, um, uh, and that's why I like to keep mine, uh, as cool to the, uh, yeast strain as they recommend, because, the warmer it is, the more you create those kind of flavors. Now, I know we use liquid yeast pretty much every brew day. I think all three of us do. Um, yeah. Is it, in your opinion, I, I don't know if we've covered this on an episode prior, uh, is liquid, I mean, I've always used liquid because it's just been bam, and specifically the imperial, like sure. no, no questions asked, whatever. But we get questions a lot where it's like, stuck fermentation or no active and you know people keep i think james you're one of them don't you keep a lot of dry yeast in, in cold storage because it basically yeah, stores forever i mean because yeah, they just do, as though. a backup because you never know and 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 i would say this is that unless you've got super super healthy fresh yeast or imperial because it seems to be with we've been using that exclusively for years now and we've had good success with fairly date uh, you know yeast that's been dated two months old or more. And I think it's because of the numbers that they pitch in the, in the, in the pack packets, do a starter, you know, at least with a starter, you're going to tell whether it's good or not. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, again, Owen's over there in Portland kind of rolling around like, no, <laughs> don't do a starter. Um, Todd, before I asked you about the, your input on this, let's talk about this part of the question where he said, you suckered me. Like I, we agree on that. Is that, is that fair to agree? No, no, of course not. I just won. <laughs> I had to move it. Sorry. I, I I saw your face on my main monitor, but people watching it couldn't see it, so I had to change to the Brady Bunch view because that that look on your face of just like, shut up, Josh. Um, I know on your brew system, again, I, when's the last time you used dry yeast at all, though, Todd? I, I think it's been a very... I used some... Uh, Joe and I brewed a while back, and we used dry yeast. We just sprinkle it on top, and it worked fine, and we didn't have any problems at all. Uh, 
I no. say it wasn't, it was a while back. It was less than a year ago, but I don't exactly know how long ago. Yeah, I should have specified. I meant as a backup, uh, like because you. Oh, the last no, time it was a it was the primary yeast, right? Yeah, batch, no, yeah. right. And I've used I've used uh O five a while ago as a primary. O five is a pretty standard dry yeast that's pretty versatile, right, James? I mean, it's uh, yeah, that's a definitely a good beer a good beer yeast to have on 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 hand in case you do think you so, have a stuck fermentation. I'm going to knock on wood, but I have not. I don't remember the last time I had a stuck fermentation. It just hadn't happened. I mean, the last time I, I had a stuck fermentation, I, I opened it up to fix it and realized that there was a little piece of plastic in the in the, in the the lid. I was doing it on a plastic bucket, and, and it had actually fermented fine. That had just come out that little uh, piece of plastic that was holding the O-ring back. And st- so I've, I haven't had a an actual bad fermentation in years. I just, I can't remember the last, you know, that's funny. That happened. James, do you remember that happened to me and my dad, that our first 10 gallon batch, one of the buckets just wasn't, I guess, sealed completely. And so the fermentation went great. It's just the air was escaping elsewhere. And so we thought my dad was, my, my dad is eyeballs our stuff like a hawk. I think he's retired. He's trying to find some fulfillment. I don't know. Uh, but he <laughs> he has no better things to do with his time. And what he messaged me like, w- the one bucket's going great. The other, or the Genesis is going great. We use the Genesis fermenter for one of our fermentation buckets. And the other was just a standard old, you know, old reliable bucket. It was like, but it's, it, it bubbles like once every 10 minutes. Ah! And, and, and yeah, met- that's we had three. It was exactly the same situation. One of <laughs> only one of them wasn't working, which we pitched them all exactly the same. Yep. So you're like, how could that be possible? Yeah, exactly. And sure enough, though, the fermentation did happen because once it came time to, you know, because James told me, J- James is always calm and collective when I message him panicking. He's <laughs> he's always like, um, don't worry about it, man. Just give it some time. Can you see through, like, does it look like there's crowds or whatever? It's like, I don't know. It kind of looks like there is. And, <laughs> okay, just wait a little bit. And then when it comes time, you know, you, you open it up and peep and see if it is. And sure enough, obviously, it ha- there would not be a remnants of high crowds if it didn't go through its fermentation process. Like, period. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And you can open it. I mean, you don't have to be that afraid to open it, even parts of the way through the fermentation. I mean, it's not like you're going to let all the gas out and it's not going to bubble anymore it'll start bubbling again in five minutes probably if you open it and look yeah yeah. there's a lot of breweries in germany that use open fermentation there's a lot of breweries here in the united states that do that oh but- good point i get i don't you know i think the internet just scares me and i'm you know one time i posted a photo me and my dad did a transfer it was not closed and it was outside and i you would have thought that we uh killed a baby seal on live tv <laughs> Because there are people, people are like messaging me like, open fermentation outdoors? What are you thinking? And I was like, oh, we've always done it this way. You know what you're inviting? And I was like, I, I, I don't. Like, I, I, we're not under a tree. I don't think a leaf will come in there. Like, um, again, like Todd just did, I knock on wood that my, my dad and I have not had a bad brew day in the traditional sense. And we haven't dumped any beer. There was some article I read um, I shared an article on our homebrew happy hour Facebook today about cannabis affecting the beer market in legalized states. But there was another article I read recently where it was like the guy who posted it on Twitter was like it was about dumping beer and my uh, and micro craft breweries having to dump beer. And the guy was like, if you're not dumping beer every year, you're not doing it right. And I was like, oh, crap, are me and my dad not doing it right? Because we're, <laughs> yeah. we're like, oh, he's like, your standards are too low. That's what he said. And I was like, I get his point. And he's not wrong. My standards, like even that ESP <laughs> where we could tell there was oxidation, I was like, it's not that bad. And, you know, maybe another man would have dumped it. But uh, I've never, me and my dad have never dumped beer knocking on all the wood that's in my house. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, <laughs> where, where is uh, Steinbart's is a really, really old store. I think it's a Portland, I believe. It could be Seattle. But anyway, I was in there one time just kind of visiting them to see how they were doing. And, and uh, they were just, fermenting in a in an old crock you know the ceramic crocks and uh they just had a a bandana over the top of it shut up that's yeah. awesome that's awesome yeah yeah maybe and he said oh he said oh my dad my grandfather fermented like this we've been fermenting like this for three generations 
What the hell do wow. you know? Yeah, you know? that ain't, ain't <laughs> that the awesome. truth. That's the, that's yeah. the only tattoo I've ever gotten is I don't know anything. It's on my, it's on my lower back. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, and what like Charlie said, it's very, it's very cliche. Uh, just relax, don't worry. You know, you're gonna have a beer. You're gonna drink it. It'll be fine. That's not his quote. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm Re- relax, have a homebrew. Relax, don't worry, have a homebrew. <laughs> yes, that one, Todd. Don't worry. Uh, All right. Anyway, so yes, Wayne, thank you for writing in. I think I'm glad when you when y'all write in and we still address it off air. I'm. Uh, we also are willing to take it on the show because, like, this was a great question because people, you know, it's a good lesson to, to one, just completely understand the temperature range you need to be working in. Because if you understand that, yeah. you will hit your numbers that much easier and you won't have any curveballs thrown in the brewing process. Because I've done it, too. And different yeast have different ranges. So um, just be, if, if someone recommends, oh, hey, for this one, I use the, yeah, the Y yeast twelve fourteen. Don't just trust that every other brew day you've used a different yeast is going to work at the same temperatures. Just re- read the labels. Uh, if you have questions, please write them to James or Todd. If you write them to me, I'm going to forward them to James or Todd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Wayne went. We don't mind at all. Wayne's smart. He messaged all. me, but he also messaged you simultaneously and went right to you. He's smart. He didn't have to. He didn't wait for me to go. Let me see what James thinks. Enter. So if you'll have questions, and like I said too, just because they're they're kind of self-serving questions that help your specific situation, some like this, we love to take these on the show because you wouldn't you might be surprised by how common you think your uncommon situation is. But it happens to all of us. And and as a community of brewers, it's nice to bring it out there because I'll get feedback from this question of people going, Man, I had that exact same thing. I, you know what? I didn't read the label. I bet you that's what it was. Next time I'll do this or, well, or do it, that. It happens on the other end too. I mean, sometimes in the summer, you know, it says sixty-eight to seventy-five or something on the yeast package, and I mean, you're not going to air condition your house to seventy-five degrees. Well, maybe you will, but uh, here, you know, some people put it on seventy-eight in the summer. Well, I mean, if if you do it at 78, it's not going to be the end of the world. I mean, it's yep. probably going to turn out fine if it's an L. So, right, absolutely. You know, you, you, I mean, you, there's a there's some leeway in those in those temperatures and so forth. There are. Yeah, and you might a given recipe, you might have you know, that temperature difference, temperature's everything on taste. You might have created something that was extraordinarily better than what you thought. It's you all, never know. It's all it's experimentation. Yep. I yeah. Know. What, what's the what's the yeast from uh, uh, the, not the Netherlands? Uh, there's a yeast, the farmhouse yeast that is the better, Quebec. like in the nineties or something. Uh, yeah. You know, I, that Quebec I, yeast. Quebec, Kvike, Kvike. Kvike, Kvike, Kvike I, yeah. I don't even. Uh, Scandinavian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Norwegian. Yeah. It is Norwegian. It's Scandinavian. Okay. Same, yeah. Yeah, uh, I can't pronounce any of their words. Well, you remember so, when that yeah. first strain from Omega, which I assume is a Kavit strain or Kavite, whatever how you pronounce it, strain. Yeah, the uh, Hot House sales. Hot Head um, came. Or hot Head. Isn't it Hot Head or yeah? I think it's Hot Head. I think it's Hot Head. When we yeah. it came out, what three or four years, four or five years ago maybe, and we we're like, whoa, in the nineties, no way, like <laughs> perfect. And uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe, Texas he, summer beer. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I don't know if I tried. Wait, was Joe's pale? That he we that we still have Ked at your place, Todd. That wasn't the one he used. He did like an oatmeal IPA for I put it in the I put it in the shipping container because it was too cold everywhere else. And and I turned the uh I turned the temperature on the air so it was the middle of the summer. I had to, and I keep it air conditioned like at eighty degrees just so it doesn't get terribly hot. And I turned the air conditioner up to like ninety so it would come on and keep it at ninety. Yeah, it turned out. I said I don't remember trying that beer because I think you only did ten gallons, and I think I, I think Joe took five at the office, and I don't know if you ever had it on tap at your place. Wasn't it an oatmeal IPA? Isn't that what it was? Or what? what? I think so. I'm making stuff up now. Now, yeah, yeah I don't remember. I, I don't remember either. I'll ask Joe, and maybe it's going to turn out he'll be like, "Dude, you shouldn't have said anything. I kept all that for myself. I didn't share it. <laughs> we never tapped it at all." Uh, but Wayne, thank you so much for submitting your question. We've got one more for today's show. It came from Frank D who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Frank wrote in, I am a plumbing and fire protection engineer who recently started homebrewing with my wife. One of the areas I specialize in is the design of plumbing and fire protection systems for breweries. After designing a number of breweries and discussing my love of beer with a few brewmasters, I decided to homebrew and I absolutely love it. 
I have a dumb question for you. There's no dumb questions, my friend. I would love to go all mm. grain. Yeah. Well, hold, let me, there's no dumb questions from our listeners. We can, oh, right, right, right. We right, can right, argue okay. about my questions to you on a different show. Uh, I would love to go to all grain brewing, but I have a special needs son and can't devote a seven hour day to brewing. Is it possible to break up the process and create my own extract one week and then extract brew the following week? I have a feeling the answer is no and that I will need to extract brew for a while longer. Thank you for your help. I love the show. P.S. Do you have a good recipe for a new extract brewer? We love stouts. Frank, um, I have to be honest, Frank. I've never heard of doing this, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. And that's why I have two guest hosts on the show who know a lot more than I do. James, have you ever heard of breaking up an all grain brew day up to five or seven days apart without any kind of issues or hiccups? No, I really haven't. Now I've heard, uh, People doing the mash when they go to bed and then wake up the next day and then do the boil. Um, the problem is there's a lot of bacteria and bugs that can do a lot of damage in a real short amount of time. Now, you can, of course, boil it, but that can also impart some tangy sour notes that the boil won't take away. So I would just suggest to try to make the brew day as efficient as possible and maybe Try doing mashing if you've got a cooler or, you know, you can mash grains in a cooler right before you go to bed and then do the ma do the rest of the beer the, the next morning when you get up. But I, I wouldn't hold off more than a day. On one of those all-in-one systems that are programmable, could that assist him in, sure. in, in this kind of situation? I'm trying to think because those, those are really to get your, your strike water going, right? Like, uh, yeah. I'm I'm wondering, I'm trying to think of like, cause you know, extract brewing, e even without specialty grains, mm -hmm. you're taking this liquid, I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is, can you make your own malt extract at home? I don't know the process of making it. If that's what he's asking. Well, yeah. You, I mean, you could do anything, but it would be a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think if you did the mash, you kept it hot, you capped it. You know, it was in a bucket or something or a big, you know, metal stainless steel pan. You capped it. You put it in the fridge. You kept it for a week. You took it out. You boiled it. You finished the bull day. I, I think it would work. I would, I would try it. I would try it because I, I would argue that it won't. But there we go. That would be ding, something ding, ding. we need to try. Todd, you want to bet five dollars that uh, if it works or not? I mean, I'll bet five. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet five dollars. Yeah, I mean, it'll no. I I shouldn't have said that. It will definitely work, but I don't think the taste will be there. I think the taste will be affected. There you go. And I'm with James. And uh, and elaborate. I, so, that, I, so Josh, just to be clear, that's a five dollar bet. Then. Well, hold on. Let's get this bet cleared. <laughs> Before I before I lose my first bet of the new year, I want to make sure we're on the same page. I'm with James. Where I it'll obviously work in regards to you will produce a uh, beverage that is potable. But what I yeah. what I agree with James is that it's not going to be the beer that you think you're making. I think because that during that cold process, I just don't see in my very limited anecdotal bubble of no knowledge, I don't see mm -hmm. how bacteria won't come into play that is going to cause off flavors that I don't think you can boil away. Todd, what yeah. do you counter with? I think that if you seal it properly, and you and it's hot while you're doing the mash, which you know which it is, uh, and even maybe bring it up to a higher temperature before you cool it down, and then seal it properly. I think I could do it. I'd be willing to bet five bucks, but we'd have to have an independent taste tester. Yeah, that was beyond that was outside of the bet to say whether or not the beer was good. Or 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 this is even better. <laughs> We will do a 15 gallon batch, save five gallons of it, ferment to 10, and then ferment the five separately and see if we can tell the difference. Yeah. Okay. And the, the only reason why I say that I think you might have some sourness or some tartness is I put the spent grains with wort in it to save for you in a, bu in a, in a bucket that I'd had sanitizer in and uh, let it sit. Of course, it was at room temperature. And it, it smelled sour the next day. Yeah. Todd, so, I, I, I accept the conditions of the bet. Our first, that'd be a great experiment. Our first, and here's what we're going to do, because I'm here for two weeks. Why don't we do 
the first part of it while I'm here either Thursday, Friday, and then we finish it off when I'm back up there again next week. Can we make the time to do that? Maybe we're doing our planning meeting. We'll talk yeah, about that's, it. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we'd have time this time, but yeah. Well, it's just the timing lined up. I just thought you wanted to win my money that much quicker, but whatever you want to do. I'm not in a big hurry. I'm used to, I mean, it's income that I can always depend on. You're still so bankrolled I'm... off my hundred, you yeah, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> still, it, the worst part is, James, is the rest of 2020, I'm only going to do enough $5 bets to get that hundred back, and he's not going to sweat. He's going to make the dumbest $5 bets with me <laughs> because he'll when he loses, he'll go, that's oh, just your money anyway, and then just throw up five dollar bill at my face like he always does i've won like (laughs) two in my life and i've todd lost one with that bartender while we were in uh uh kansas city and and when he lost that bet did you see how my jaw dropped down james i was like (laughs) this is a stranger todd just lost a bet like what the hell (laughs) it was and i had no idea how good it was (laughs) how good he had it right josh oh well yeah because you were so he the glasses he had were 16 ounces and you were like my friend, I know glasses. Those are not <laughs> okay. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. We, we were we were all we were all a little bit uh, had we were enjoying ourselves at that point of the night. It looked like a ten ounce glass. That's what you said. <laughs> it, you said, and I and I being the instigator, I am. I go, would you bet him five dollars, Todd? And Todd goes, oh, <laughs> easily. And the guy goes, I'll bet you five dollars. I I've been bartending here yeah, for I years. Bought the, I bought the glasses, <laughs> yeah. you idiot. Yeah, and y'all shook. You put your hand out like nothing, and he shook it so quick, and so he went and got the other glass that was marked sixteen, and he poured it all in there. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he, yeah and, he looked. He looked like me when I get when I accept a bet from you. He, he did. That's what me. was so surreal. Because I was like, I was like, what the hell? Why can't this like? In my head, you know how sometimes people, you get the fake arguments in the shower, like, hey, here's what I should have said to that person. And, and, and you know, you have, the, <laughs> you have the fake audience applauding you, blah, blah, blah. I do that every day of my life with Todd Burns. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get him. Here's how I'm going to get my money back. I'm going to do this. And the, the crowd applauds, and then I wake up, or then the shower's over, or whatever. This guy had it so good. He had no idea. I was like, man, you've, you're in rare ground, my friend. He was like, uh. Yeah, yeah, your your boss didn't know any better. I was like, yeah, that's the problem. Is how come I don't get that version of Todd, like <laughs> the idiot version? The guy was like, he, in his mind, he was thinking this guy's an idiot, and he's probably had too much to drink. Yeah, you were so confident. That was the best part. You're like, there's no, there's no way those are sixteen ounce glasses. I know glassware. And the guy's like, you're right, because it's not like I've been bartending for my whole life. Or- <laughs> He was good about it. He was very cool about it. He didn't want to take thing. your money, and I insisted. I don't know if you remember that part. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he wasn't going to take your money. He was like, no, no, he no. He was like, oh, that's cool. And Josh was behind him going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I jumped over the bar. I was like, drinks for everybody on me. <laughs> oh, and that was also the night that I was so sure I was beating you in the weight loss competition. Um, I I don't know if people who follow us on Instagram have noticed. I deleted all evidence of me gloating prior did you to really. Of course I did. No, there was one the fat kid by the pool. There was only one. Yeah, no, I don't think I deleted that one. I think I left that one up. That one was funny. Come on, Todd. That one was funny. Yeah, yeah it was. Funny. Now well, he's not on Instagram, so he didn't get to see it. Oh no, I show him. You believe oh, you, me? You? Every time I'm around Todd, and I because people will comment and they go, "Man, that's just mean. You're posting stuff, and Todd will never see it." And I'm like, "No, no, no. Look, here's a picture of me showing Todd. Like, I'm show- he, Todd sees it. He trust me. me. I text it to him personally. He, uh, his his inbox for me, his SMS inbox is like a terrible Reddit thread of its own. He, poor guy. Oh yeah. If I ever decide to let him go, the the with calls thing will be no problem at all. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, I've oh, done. Oh, you want you yeah. want cause? Yeah. I mean, how many causes do you need? Oh, trust how me. How many yeah. causes do you need? I will not. Yeah, I will not be. Uh, Texas Workforce Commission will just immediately. Pfft. Yeah. No, <laughs> you're right. I, and, and I would have deserved it too. I, I get it. Uh, but anyways, uh, Frank. Yes. Uh, extract brewing. Let's just get this out of the way. There is nothing wrong with it. If you want, if you want to spice it up, get into specialty grains. If you haven't done that already. Um, play with fermentation. There's a lot of stuff you can do. I know people who only extract brew and they produce phenomenal beer. My dad's yep. neighbor, he still exclusively does uh, porters and, and extract brewing. He goes to SoCo, which is off of South Congress in Austin, gets all his stuff there and, and brews only extract and his beers are phenomenal. All grain is, if you want to step up to it, 
you know, and, and it doesn't fit your schedule, don't beat yourself up over it. And when I win my five dollars to prove that it's probably not good to separate it by a week, then you know you, we can establish that that might not be the best idea. But you can do your own experiment too, and I'd love to hear. Yeah, from, we'd love to hear back on that. Experiment. Yeah, any listener, especially if it proves me correct. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. That's there the, might be some money, and I've got a hundred dollars set aside. <laughs> eighty-five, eighty-five, because you've already spent fifteen of it having teenagers taunt me. You know how hard Thir- it was. Thirteen, fourteen years. I guess those are teenagers. You know how hard it was to not. Thirteen is the worst age too, because they're so pompous and they're like. They're 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 just getting through puberty, so they have hair under their armpits, so they think like they're men now. Ah, uh, I was just gonna uh, elbow a kid. Uh, how dare you call me fat? Look, y'all not have eyes. Look at this man. But anyway, I'm digressing too. Thank you, uh, thank you to Frank. Thank you to Wayne for writing in, gentlemen. I do appreciate y'all doing this today early, so I could get this published on time. I look forward to seeing y'all smiling faces tomorrow, and we'll do this again next week. Right. Thank you. All right. And, and that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Spike Brewing Equipment, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. Learn more about their incredible equipment at spikebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and make the most of your brew day on behalf of todd burns james carlson and the pearl media network i'm joshua steubing thank you for listening This program is made possible by the Checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.